after what was a great phenomenal game in London where the Giants defeated the Packers 27 to 22 it's now raising a lot of questions regarding the future of quarterback Daniel Jones we've got a lot to talk about today this isn't just some basic talk about Daniel Jones I really want to get into every possibility we can do with Daniel Jones and really ask the tough questions so let's get right into it Before we start, guys, as always, if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe for content just like this on this channel. And let's get right into it. Listen, Daniel Jones is proving to be one of the grittiest, toughest players on this team and possibly one of the toughest players in the NFL at the quarterback position. He's taking right after, you know, Eli Manning has that Eli mentality, you know, I, I'm not saying he is Eli Manning. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but you can see a lot of the similarities as far as his toughness, the grit. You know that he was battling that ankle injury coming off of that game in Chicago. He he got put back in that game. They had him doing handoffs after that because obviously he wasn't very mobile. And then you go on to practice. He wasn't supposed to practice. Then he practices. And then a lot of people are saying he does well. And then the man is taken off of the, of the injury report. Like that's how tough this guy is he's gonna battle through a lot of injuries he's gonna try to fight through as much injuries as he can I know in the past couple of years he's had the problems with the injuries and we'll talk about his past couple years in just a second but regarding injuries we know that he just doesn't finish seasons around week 12 week 13 or so he comes out for the year and you know he's hurt so obviously that's something we have to see until around week 12 to see if he sustains an injury or if he you know is able to keep playing but you know that I mean last week and this week proved that he is a tough gritty player and he has the mindset the Eli mentality to play quarterback for the New York Giants and DJ has been playing a very exceptional year up to this point he's only had three to passing touchdowns two rushing touchdowns two interceptions through five weeks is not bad you know just talking about his past couple of years with turnovers and that's why I really wanted to bring up his past couple of years as well a lot of people didn't want Daniel Jones to be re-signed here because they were worried about the turnover issues you can see now that it's been a while since he's really been a nuisance turning over the ball yes he's had I think a forced fumble he, he, he had a sack fumble in week one or two or something like that this year he has two interceptions one was not his fault David Sills screwed us over but that one was not his fault, um, and I, for, I forgot his first interception. I forgot which wh in which game that was. His turnovers are not a big deal. The turnovers are not a big deal this season. He's not turning over the football. He's also not putting the ball in harm's way. You know, there's not a lot of dropped interceptions. Like he's making the right decisions week after week. He's having high quarterback ratings, high QBRs. That is it. That is due to the fact that he is making all the right decisions. Now, the biggest issue, obviously, is can he lead this team to victory? Now, he's completing 66.7% of his passes. He's doing with, with the weapons that he has. I mean, he went into last game against the Green Bay Packers with David Sills, Richie James, and uh, Darius Slayton and Marcus Johnson. Wait, I don't think Richie James played in this game. So um, you went into this game with Marcus Johnson, David Sills, and Darius Slayton. That is a just atrocity of a wide receiving core and the fact that he was still able to put up 217 yards with guys like Jair Alexander guys like Darnell Savage guys like Rasul Douglas guys like any of the any other of these corners out there playing cornerback a good Green Bay defensive back room that he was able to put up those numbers with Marcus Johnson who I don't even know who this guy is who this guy is at all he was able to put up some numbers Darius Slayton only came into this game with one catch prior to th this past game and led the led the um the game in receiving yards with like 79 or something like that so daniel jones is having to work with all these different you know uh adversities right especially at the wide receiver position for a while it was the offensive line i believe he's been sacked 15 times uh, up to this point maybe 16 now because of the, this past game i'm it's, it's right around there that is still a high number through five weeks but Last week was a good week because he only got sacked one time and you could see what he's able to do when he has time in the pocket. 
So the offensive line is playing a little better. That's one adversity he had to deal with. The running game was an adversity he had to deal with. That's getting better. Now I think the biggest problem is the wide receiver room. And I I, I, I pose this question. I don't really know how to answer this yet, but I pose it to everybody else. Is Daniel Jones that bad of an option that if we revamp this wide receiving core this year, say Brian Dable and Joe Shane, they go hard at this wide receiving core. We trade for maybe a DJ Moore, right? A lot of that's been floating around ever since Matt Rule got fired. We trade for a DJ Moore. We draft a, a, you know, a couple of receivers and we revamp this wide receiver room. Maybe we get a couple of free agents as well, obviously. Is DJ that bad of an option to sign either to a franchise tag or we sign him to like a three-year $60 million deal, and that's $20 million a year, which is very, very cheap. That is a freaking bargain in today's in today's league as far as quarterback market goes. You know, you're seeing a lot of these franchise quarterbacks get a minimum of 25 up to maybe $40 million a year, and then the elite guys are making $50 million a year. Obviously, Daniel Jones isn't going to touch the $50 million, but if we want at least one more year to see what he can do, we can franchise tag him. And I think that is like $30 million, or we can sign him to like a three-year $60 million deal where he's making $20 million a year, and I'll Obviously, you can allocate those to different years, front loaded, back loaded, however they want to do it. But that is one option that I don't think is a bad option. Now, I know a lot of people want to see more numbers, right? This is his first game without, you know, first game passing over 200 yards. And I understand that. I understand the lack of the touchdowns. But you have to, you guys have to be mindful of what he had, what he's having right now. Look at Aaron Aaron Rodgers and his performance against us, okay? He's in a very similar situation. This guy is a Hall of Fame quarterback. He is in a very similar situation. He's putting up very similar numbers to the, to Daniel Jones because of the fact that he does not have Devontae Adams anymore. He has Randall Cobb there with a shell of what Randall Cobb was. He had 99 yards against us, but he's still not the Randall Cobb of, you know, yesteryear, right? And, you know, he's not dealing with a lot. He's dealing with rookies at wide receiver, a poor offensive line. Well, not poor offensive line, a worse offensive line than years past. You got a lot of younger guys on there um, that make rookie mistakes. But Romeo Dobbs is okay. You know, Christian Watson is like they're trying to use him like Debo Samuel. I mean, there, there's a lot there that is holding Aaron Rodgers back. And you can see it. Look at Aaron Rodgers' stat line just for this game. It was like 25 of 30-something, right? It was He had a bad completion percentage along with only 222 yards or something like that. And two touchdowns passing, which is good. Something that I want Daniel Jones to do. But they, they're able to you know throw it in the red zone a lot more. Um, but... And then, obviously, no interception. We weren't able to pick him off. But the stat line is worse, except the touchdowns, than Daniel Jones was. I mean, Daniel Jones had a little bit less yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but had only six incomplete passes, 21 of 27, 217 yards. Also did work in the run game as well. I believe he had 37 rush yards as well on a couple of carries. So, you know, he's doing the most with what he has. He's putting up the numbers expected of the wide receiving core that he has. I don't think anybody should be expecting 300 yard days with three passing touchdowns with the with David Sills and Marcus Johnson at wide receiver. Even Richie James who's been doing a good job up to this point is still nowhere near what a, you know, a starting wide receiver should be. I mean, he's doing a very good job, don't get me wrong again. But in any other roster, Richie James is like a fourth, fifth, even sixth receiver. Maybe he doesn't even make a roster. You know, this was a guy that was supposed to be a special teams returner and a damn good one at that. But th that's all his role was supposed to be. But due to in injuries, due to inconsistencies from our star players, Darius Slayton not being in the lineup, Kenny Galladay being benched, you're seeing Richie James, you're seeing David Sills get their, their time to shine. And... You know, it doesn't do a good service to, to Daniel Jones, who is constantly looking downfield, not finding anything open, having to use his legs more often than he probably wants to. Another big thing is that Daniel Jones has really shown that he is a big factor in us winning games. That is one thing that I really wanted to see, you know, moving forward. You know, we were able to win games with Colt McCoy at quarterback where we beat Seattle with Wayne Goldman and stuff like that. Like, we were able to win games without Daniel Jones. And a lot of people were saying, hey, maybe Daniel Jones isn't a factor in us winning. But I will be honest with you guys. 
you know, disregarding Saquon Barkley, because obviously he's a huge part of us winning, I don't even think we win this game against London without, I mean, against London, in London, against the Packers, if it's not for Daniel Jones. I honestly don't think we would win most of these games without Daniel Jones, and that's something I want in a quarterback. I want us to have to worry about not being able to win games if, if our, my quarterback is not in the lineup. I want my quarterback to be a huge factor in us winning games. That and that shows that if he's in the game, I always believe that we have a chance of winning this, winning the game at hand. And that's something Eli Manning obviously was a huge, you know, the reason why he is such a, a prominent name in New York Giants history is like the best Giants quarterback of all time because he always gave us a chance to win big games obviously with the two Super Bowls right we want Daniel Jones we want any other quarterback that plays quarterback for the Giants to be a winning factor in a game game you know each week week in and week out now I really really like you guys know my take on Daniel Jones for the past couple of months you know I am ready to move on from Daniel Jones now with each week that goes by and he continues and continues to ball out and continues to you know um, I guess face adversity and overcome it I am growing a little bit of a soft spot again for Daniel Jones. I keep He keeps reeling me back in. I'm telling you, I'm getting tired of it, man. But he keeps reeling me back in because I really feel bad for him. I really feel like I wish Brian Dable came sooner. I really wish we were able to figure things out a lot sooner. And things aren't even where they should be yet, right? Obviously, we talked about the wide receiving core. But that's something that we'll, we will fix you know, down the line. But I really wish a competent offensive coordinator a competent head coach came in here and worked with Daniel Jones and developed in the right way from from his rookie season because he was coming off a strong rookie season had a lot of turnovers but that's something that obviously could be fixed because he's already fixed it you know I really wish Brian Dable came sooner or a competent head coach came sooner to help Daniel Jones because I really do believe Daniel Jones can be a franchise quarterback. It's just a matter of timing. The timing is the biggest thing because they did not pick up his fifth year option. Deservingly so, they shouldn't have because they are, you know, they were new to the building. They're new to Daniel Jones. They don't know anything about what's going on. They shouldn't have taken it. They shouldn't have, you know, committed like that. But now we're in a situation where it's the last year of his contract. He's showing that he can play, but there are still question marks there. Like, can he sustain this? Can he not only sustain this, but take us uh, to another level? Can he take his game and his team to another level? And I just don't think he has enough time to overcome the lack of productivity that he's shown in the past three years. Now, he's shown gradual growth, and now I think he's really starting to grow but it's been gradual. It hasn't been exponential. It hasn't been up to par with like a six overall pick, for example, right? So that's the problem. That's the predicament that Daniel Jones is in. You want him to succeed. You want him. To, people may want him to be a quarterback, the quarterback here next year. But how do the Giants know? How do they trust him to give him a big deal and a, a big contract, rather? And he come he comes in here and lives up to it. Like it's gonna be hard to decipher. It's still hard to it's still hard to see what Daniel Jones is capable of with the with the guys we have around him, right? It's still hard to see that. So um, I really wish Daniel Jones. Cause I don't want I don't want Daniel Jones to go to a team like New Orleans. I don't want him to go to a team like New Orleans and just ball out, right? And then he becomes the quarterback for their future because they have you know stuff going on over there. They have a good offensive line. They have uh, good wide receivers. They have Alvin Kamara and company over there, right? They got a lot of weapons over there. I don't want him to go to a team like New Orleans, right? That is going to need a quarterback and he just balls out over there and we missed out on him and then we're forced to develop another quarterback and we got to see if they're going to do well. So in best case scenario, I would want Daniel Jones to stay. In best case scenario, I would want Daniel Jones to stay. Like I said, three years, tw- three years, $60 million, $20 million a year, I think is a good, fair offer for Daniel Jones up to him if he wants to take it or if a, or if a team offers him more. Or he walks and we draft the quarterback or we use him as a bridge and we franchise him and then we draft the quarterback. Like, it's up to you. What do you guys think? I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. What do you think the New York Giants should do? This is not something I have decided yet. I think I'm leaning more towards keeping him for three years and seeing what happens and, you know, have it a little bit more team friendly, that contract that I mentioned earlier. And, you know, to have us not 
completely give up on getting a quarterback in, in a draft in the future. So that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys in the next video.